Okay. Um, well, thank you everyone for attending. This is an introduction about NATS. Uh, first, I uh, just want a quick ask. How many of you have already heard about NATS before? Well, it's plenty of, okay, yeah, we joined last year with the CNCF, so there has definitely been an uptick in the number of contributors and maintainers to the project. And how many of you are running it in production? Or, okay, at, at least three, okay? Oh, that's great. Okay, so a uh, little bit about myself. I'm a, my name is Valdemar Quevedo. You can find me on Twitter, WallyQS. I'm a software engineer at Cynedia Communications, where most of the maintainers for NATS are currently working. And um, we, I'm a core maintainer for NATS uh, for uh, around four years already, but I have been using NATS-based systems for uh, close to seven years already. And last year, I managed to publish uh, Practical NATS, which is one of the first books about NATS. Uh, anyone has a, has a book? We gave many copies at the uh, KubeCon in, in Seattle, but I didn't bring many this time. So, agenda for this talk, I'll just give you a quick overview about the NATS project, so the basic, uh, the, and talk about this messaging paradigm, and also talk about what are it's coming uh, in the next feature from, in the next release from NATS, uh, NATS version two, which the team has, is very busy at, um, in, in shipping right now, so I'm actually, this time, uh, I'm the only one from the NATS team that is attending KubeCon. And I'll give you a quick demo of uh, assembling a NAT super cluster on Kubernetes using the NATS operator. Also, uh, NATS operator users? Okay, one. Okay, thank you. So, about NATS. NATS is an eight year old, uh, battle tested, production proven cloud native messaging system that is made for developers and operators that want to spend more time. Uh, doing just uh, communicating within their microservices that rather than architecting um, messaging uh, solutions. So what distinguishes NATS as a project is its focus on simplicity and performance. And with the V2 release, the team has really doubled down on making it a, a very secure system. It has uh, built from the ground up for, to be a cloud native uh, system, actually the first problem that NAT solved was for the communication within Cloud Foundry, uh, which is a, a platform as a service project that was uh, based in Ruby. Original version from NAT was based in Ruby as well. Even for Ruby standards at those times, uh, 2012, 11, it could also push around to 150,000 messages per second. And now it's written in Go and the performance is way, way uh, higher. Be it's uh, thanks to its simplicity, there is uh, many implementations for the uh, of many clients. Uh, the team supports around ten official clients, and uh, with NATS, not not only you can do request response, but also you can do um, multiple communication patterns that I will talk about uh, in a bit. So we joined last year with this, uh, as part of the as an incubation project for the Cloud Native Computer Foundation. We're under the streaming and messaging uh, section uh, from the CNCF landscape. You can see it, NATS has been uh, uh, close in terms of functionality to gRPC. On like gRPC, NATS, uh, it can also do request response. And on like gRPC, NATS uh, doesn't treat, um, its payloads are opaque, so it doesn't couple with any type of encoding. So you, don't, you can use message pack, protocol buffers, uh, or just plain JSON and, or bytes and bin binary data. And uh, you also have a more, a more um, communication patterns and load balancing all in this part, part, as part of the same binary, which is uh, really helpful. Since last year, I think the number of contributors have, uh, have, has raised by one third, more than one, more than one third. Uh, the Slack, they have a very active Slack channel. Uh, definitely join if you want to hear more. Uh, the team is uh, all the time uh, ramping up users to the project, and uh, we're very happy to see uh, new members uh, drill, uh, pick, picking our brain and uh, devising new solutions to. Um, which, well, it's, it's a very exciting time to form part of the NATS community. 
Uh, biggest release this year is Nats V2, which, which it's about to ship in uh, less than a couple of weeks. But since 2014, uh, the number of re uh, releases has increased. So it's a has a um, over seven year old uh, project, but it is since 2014 where we have seen an increase in the adoption and more production deployments from, from Nats. Uh, not, not only part of Cloud Foundry, but for other solutions. So Nats was created by Derek Collison. And Derek Collison, uh, he has been building messaging systems for, for a long time, for over 25 years. And many of the core maintainers um, from, uh, come from companies like Tipco or, or Google. So there is a lot of uh, accumulated experience, messaging experience uh, in this team. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be um, part of this team. And, it, and also the community is, uh, it, it's, they're always, um, well, you, you can see from the Slack channel, it's just uh, very active. Uh, the number of NATS end users are, is increasing uh, more and more. We are recently heard about uh, Tinder. They made a great, uh, good blog post of uh, how we're using NATS, part of their architecture, and using WebSockets and for the matching logic, uh, NATS for discovery. Uh, sadly, there's no end user talk at uh, this conference. Uh, I heard there was one uh, cloud native rejects. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing more about uh, user voice and presenting about NATS and how they're adopting it. So the basic use cases for NATS is um, uh, cloud, native, uh, cloud native messaging. It's very um, reliable, op optimized for doing the microservice uh, communication. But you can also use it for uh, eventing, uh, publishing events, on, on data streaming for uh, observability analytics. Uh, command and control, thanks to the multiple communication patterns that you can have with NATS, it's, uh, it's very useful to be able to orchestrate those multiple nodes on their uh, single request. There is uh, IoT and Edge uh, uh, use cases as well, thanks to the, how lightweight the protocol is. So telemetry sensor data uh, that feel really well. And also, we have been seen it use it where um, basically users looking for something that is a little more simple uh, to what they already have. Basically like complementing like a Kafka deployment sometimes. Okay. So one of the goals, what I think is, uh, from NATS is to provide an always available dial tone to be able to connect everything. And as par part of NATS, or the core of NATS is three simple patterns. Is, uh, you can uh, publish subscribe, essentially one-to-end -end communication. You have built-in support for load balancing. So you can, enhance, you can create subscriptions that are not only to receive uh, for one-to-end, but one-to-one -one, uh, randomly load balancing the, the request. And of course, you have a request, re request reply as well, which is itself built on top of uh, pure public subscribe. So it's using ephemeral subscriptions with limited interest that it announces the number of subscribers, and then you expect the response with the lowest latency, for example. You publish and subscribe to subjects, uh, simple subjects, for example, foo. You can use uh, the dot character to create hierarchies of subjects, for example, food.bar. Uh, and based on those uh, delimited um, subjects by the dots, you can create wildcards. So for example, food.asterisk would match anything that is published to food.bar or food.bas. Food.asterisk.bar will match anything that is, gets published with um, uh, uh, food.a.bar or food.b.bar. And also, there's a stronger variation from the wildcard, which is the full wildcard, that can match anything from a certain point from the subject after a dot. So you can uh, even create a full wildcard from the beginning of the subject, and this would match all of the messages. So you can basically inspect anything that is going uh, flowing by uh, from the NATS traffic. So you can do request response, which is end-to-end, uh, uh, going to be to end-to-end, -end, one-to-end uh, communication. But you can also do one-to-end. So you can publish on Foo, and this gets announced to any number of clients that were announced interest on the Foo subject. And you can enhance the subscriptions with, by appending the Q group name, for example, Sub Foo Workers. 
In this case, only one of them will be receiving the request uh, randomly. There's only a ran random load balancing. Now, let's say that you can create now a sub, a, a sub uh, full wildcard uh, subscription. Now, all of that traffic that was being sent to the subfood.bar workers is going to be also delivered to this uh, wildcard subscriber. And you can create as many, another wildcard subscriber that will not uh, affect the original communication, which was to send requests or uh, emit events to subfood.bar.workers. So you can see that just by having Nats uh, being uh, as a broker from all of the systems, you can think um, your deployment automatically becomes more flexible to uh, how you want to use a message in the future. So we summarize this as a tip um, to users that never assume uh, the audience of a message. So never assume that, for example, this message is going to only be consumed by, uh, let's say, like uh, service A. Um, the day will come where you actually want to find out these messages for, let's say, for auditing purposes or many other uh, use case uh, requirements come up. So it is uh, really helpful to be able to take advantage of the publish subscribe uh, paradigm to accommodate those uh, new requirements. So these are the, some of the main traits for NATS, its performance, its scalability, and its uh, resilience. The single binary, the small um, binary from uh, the NAT server within Go can push around 18 million messages per second. And uh, if you create multiple connections, you can even, uh, in a very uh, beefy machine, you can uh, get up to 80 million messages per second. And the team is very, very uh, careful with the performance. So it is. Uh, uh, anything that goes through the fast, uh, through the fast path, uh, this very careful analysis. And the simplicity and performance are, uh, dictate a lot of what gets into NATS and what is left out. So for example, NATS, as it's an at most once delivery system. There, is, there are no messages uh, guarantees in core NATS. So there are, not, no, there are no features from other messaging systems such as transactions, uh, message schemas, or last will and testament, which is an uh, other messaging system have it. And instead, it's, it is a stateless server for ephemeral communication, and that is just very good at that. Availability is another thing that, um, great thing about the design from NATS. The NATS servers are very famous for having very high uptimes. And this is because the NAT server, uh, we say that it a, has a selfish optimization. Let's say if a client is not being able to process uh, messages fast enough uh, by default, cannot read data uh, from two seconds from a socket, then the NAT server considers that client to be unhealthy and it will uh, disconnect that client. This is in order to protect the service for and all of the other clients that want to um, keep on communicating. So this is very different from other types of systems where it uh, really focuses on uh, trying to uh, ensure that a certain message is processed by a certain client, but then the, uh, it affects the se uh, service from, from others. And this becomes like the, in terms of errors, this becomes like a slow consumer error. And the, we have, uh, in, as part of the client's logic, you can eagerly detect whether your client is becoming a slow consumer, for example. There is uh, full mesh uh, clustering as well, uh, full mesh one hop for high availability. And so any client as part of your cluster only needs to be connected to any one of the nodes from part of the, cl the NATS cluster, and it will, uh, the message will be properly routed to the, to the endpoint. This is a, a, the, it is a plain text uh, based protocol, uh, has a very few number of verbs. This is essentially the same protocol as when NATS was created. So it has not changed for, uh, since it, uh, for more than seven years. And also for NATS version two, the NATS client uh, protocol has not changed. On the other hand, the clustering protocol has changed. And I'll, I'll, take, I'll talk about it later or maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow I also have a deep dive if you want to 
uh, know more about the internals and changes that are coming to uh, version two. Takes, there's a very low configuration needed for NATs, and in NAT, NATs version two, the authentication is also decentralized, which is very, it's very cool, and has a very straightforward uh, API. There is uh, built-in uh, gossiping of the uh, network topology, so your client can just connect to any node that is part of the cluster, and it will be aware of where are the, are the other endpoints that it can fail over to, for example. And if a new node joins, then it will be gossiping that new network endpoint so that uh, you can only, as, as long as you can connect to at least one of them, then the failover will, uh, you can rely on the failover to eventually be uh, available as well as a client. So there are two main uh, de de delivery modes. Um, in, we have separated them into different projects. I've been talking about uh, NATs, which we call uh, core NATs. It's, again, at most once delivery, meaning that you have to be connected in order to receive the message. And we have another project named NATs Streaming, which gives you at least once delivery guarantees. This is, goes more in line to the classic notion of what we think a queue is, where you publish something and expect someone to pick something uh, from that queue. And so yeah, there's at least once delivery with message replay and all those kind of features. And the team is very opinionated in the exactly once uh, requirements. Uh, uh, so Derek has actually implemented exactly once in previous um, messaging systems that he architected. And the lesson is that it is not worth the effort. So NAT streaming, it's a layer on top of NATs. It's using protocol buffers on using the request response uh, protocol from NATs. Uh, you can uh, replay from a certain sequence, sequence the number of messages, has uh, durable subscribers, so you can connect and resume uh, consuming the messages that have been published. There, there has a notion of an ACK, unlike, uh, unlike NATs. So you can have a number of set, what is the no maximum number of uh, in-flight uh, messages that can, can exist for a certain uh, client. And for the high availability, it ha we have a uh, raft clustering for the replication of uh, messages. So back to NATS. NATS is uh, it's written in Go. It's extremely uh, high performance, has uh, TLS support. Authorization and authentication are done in the NATS layer. And one announcement is that we have changed uh, all of the repos from the NATS uh, IO organization. So for a long time, NATS, the NATS server, what's called uh, GNATSD, so beca because of the rewrite from, from Go. And originally, the name from NATS was NATS server, and we went back to the original name from NATS, so it's now uh, NATS servers, and we have redirected from GNATSD to, to this one. And the binary name as well will change to NATS server for the V2 release. We have also renamed all of the NATS clients uh, libraries, the official ones. So what used to be NATS uh, under NATS-IO go NATS, now it's uh, NATS.go. So that way you can, if you're looking for the Python client, for example, it would be NATS.py. And these are all the, some of the official clients that the team is uh, uh, supporting. So NATS.c, NATS.net, NATS.js, and I have tried to follow that convention. This is a sample API from the NATS Go client. Uh, basically subscribing to the greeting subject. Uh, this is an asynchronous uh, subscri subscription. So uh, also I, a heads up if you're um, adopting uh, some, it's sometimes uh, new users expect that the asynchronous subscriptions are going to be processing the messages in parallel. But actually, the client, uh, that is uh, uh, up to the end user of um, the determining what is the level of concurrency that they want for, the, for a client. So for example, if there is a sleep inside of this uh, greetings callback, then uh, the next message won't be processed until this, uh, the processing from this message is done. So you need to create like an in-flight group of uh, goroutines, for example, in, or, or threats in case you want to increase the level of uh, concurrency. And since NATS is a most once uh, system, then you have to 
you will only be receiving uh, messages as a client from the moment that you express interest into the subject. This is an example, uh, Nats cluster topology, where you can uh, publish a message and then it will be routed properly to uh, the other client that uh, uh, announced interest into a certain subject. And there is, in case one of these nodes uh, fails, then there is an automatic reconnection logic uh, to the continue um, communicating. So about NATS streaming, or what we also call a STAN, which is the opposite of NATS, has at least one delivery guarantees. There's this one, the, the repo is NATS streaming server. It is, uh, again, NATS request uh, protocol. Well, we also have uh, renamed the clients from uh, what used to be, for example, go NATS streaming into stan.go. So we're going back a little bit to the original name to stan. And then similar to NATS, the NATS clients, you can find uh, stand.go, stand.py, stand.net, and stand.rb. And these are all the implementations for the request response protocol for the uh, NATS streaming or STAN. The API is very similar to the NATS uh, client API. You, in this case, I, I flipped the, the order, so uh, just for Purpose, uh, for example, purposes. By default, it will connect to the locally available NAT server. So it has a embedded NATS connection, but you can also pass your own customized NATS connection. And in this case, this client will receive the messages that have ever been published from the time, well, to a, to a channel from, from the beginning. So you can pass a function stand deliver all available, and it will replay all the messages that have been published uh, so far. And again, NATS streaming is uh, a layer on top of NATS. So uh, you have to prepare. Uh, there is an embedded mode for NATS to run inside of the NATS streaming server as well. And but uh, you can also, it is flexible so that you can uh, prepare a NATS cluster. Uh, and then just uh, have point the NAT streaming servers to any of the nodes as part of NAT's cluster and have that uh, the replication uh, happening on, on that transport. So uh, about the NAT's uh, V2 release, this is the biggest uh, release from the project since uh, its beginnings, as you can see from the spikes from commits. Uh, the goal from NATS is this release in particular is that uh, NATS for a long time was a uh, technology that would be, for example, inside of a data center optimized for the service discovery and communication within the same data center. And uh, with NATS version two, uh, we are enhancing NATS. NATS is becoming enhanced so that you can create clusters of clusters and also communicate in a very secure way uh, using all of these, um, well, new technologies that I will explain. And we have a w built one uh, example solution that is using all of these pieces named uh, NGS. And here's the link if you want to um, get more info. But it's essentially a global communication uh, network, single URL that you can connect to. And it has uh, like seven regions across the world. And it is geo-aware geo from where you want to con uh, from where you are connecting and will be routing the messages uh, properly. So you, just, you only need to know one single URL and then you can communicate uh, th uh, over the world with other clients. So list some of the features that are coming with uh, NATS uh, version two, and I'll explain more uh, if you want to drop by a deep dive tomorrow. Have gateways, super clusters, and leaf nodes. Uh, super cluster are the cluster of clusters, so that span more than one data center. Gateways are the what connects those clusters. And we also have uh, leaf nodes, what are called leaf nodes, which is uh, essentially a new type of NAT server that connects to a super cluster so that you can have uh, Dumber clients that do not implement all of the features from a, a NAT's client. And for example, like devices that uh, require less, less, with more constrained environments, the leaf nodes can be helpful. And the clustering protocol was completely rewritten so that we can have a very cool feature named accounts. Accounts, it's, um, 
say, we, we say that is, they are like containers, but for messaging. So NAT's, uh, NAT's uh, version one, everything is done over a single global account. And you can also use NAT's version two in that way, but that is, uh, well, it is a new dollar G global account uh, over all of that is happening, where that is, uh, where that communication is happening. And you can create more accounts to be able to separate the subject name spaces for uh, different purposes under the same uh, server. So it's basically multi-tenant. There's a new technology named uh, end keys, which, is, uh, which are ED25519 uh, based uh, keys that you can, basically a PKI kind of system where you can create a private key and then uh, use, use your own uh, private keys to be able to sign the challenges that the server send you. So that way the NAT servers do not have any, any private keys or any account information whatsoever. You only need to challenge the, you need to sign the challenges that the server send you and then you will be uh, authorized based on the JWTs which are define the permissions that you have. And so there's a system account support um, for operations graceful shut shutdown and uh, every requested feature being able to authorize based on the distinguished name syntax or SAN for the TLS uh, support. So accounts uh, running out of time, but essentially, yeah, they allow you to have a multi-tenant uh, set up from a, from a server. And two, we are, we are uh, adopting two new uh, abstractions that to represent some of the type of uh, communication that happens with NETs. Now we say that anything that is, uh, any type of a subscription that where a requester is expecting a response, we call that a service. And we are, when, whenever it is just a data flow, uh, um, just publishing data and sending events, we call those streams. And using the accounts and export and import mechanisms, you can mount, for example, a namespace from another account so that you can share data between multiple accounts. And in case of the NGS, you can do that in a global scale using the uh, permissions dictated by the JWTs. This is an, an example of a, an, an export, for example on the Synadia account. It is exporting for anyone that wants to import this data from this account. You can uh, import the cloud.nergo status or private.dev uh, stats. In this case, the, account, the CNCF account is importing that data. So end keys and JWTs, um, this was designed so that the NAT server does not uh, hold in any private keys or you, this essentially, this usage essentially deprecate the uh, basic authentication that we used to have, so, uh, or bcrypt based credentials. And there's a number of uh, metadata that the JWTs uh, have. I'll just go through and um, cover the deep dive tomorrow. So example, uh, NATS super cluster. Uh, important to say about the NATS clusters are that, uh, the original NATS clusters, they are a full mesh one hop, so meaning that there's going to be only one hop uh, when you have to route the messages. For the NATS super clusters, uh, there's going to be at most three hops when you want to forward a message. Let's say from one region to another region, at most there's going to be uh, three hops for delivering the message. And this is because one, each one of the clusters nodes, they only have a single outbound connection to one of the other uh, clusters. So if you have a client connecting to one of these uh, clusters, they can just send a request. It gets propagated through the other clusters, and you can receive the request back. Um, this is an example of um, the super clusters. I can give you a, a leaf nodes are essentially um, an extra node that connects to a super cluster, and then you can communicate with the leaf node instead and the same thing would happen. So about NATS on uh, Kubernetes, uh, just to briefly touch on this, I have uh, recently released the new version of the NATS operator, uh, B0.5, that is uh, NATS B2 ready, has all the, um, uh, basically NATS operator 
um, composing many of the what we have learned are the good uh, best practices of deploying NATs. Uh, when deploying NATs, you for creating the clusters, it is kind of a Kind of tricky sometimes, like setting the air records and assembling the, the full mesh. So the NATS operator can do this for you. Uh, it works best on uh, Kubernetes B1.12, but I think that users are getting ahead of us. And uh, I think DigitalOcean, which is what I am basing this demo, already supports uh, B1.14. Uh, GKE, I think, is still B1.12, but basically all of the cloud providers already support B1.12 at least. It, NAS operator is very helpful for creating the clusters, uh, which is uh, very simple, uh, a small YAML. You have a cluster scope mode so that it can govern and create clusters with, uh, throughout all of the namespaces. There is a very, this is a kind of advanced feature. You can use uh, bound tokens uh, from Kubernetes and if you have a kind of niche feature where you can not only use the service accounts, but uh, have the service accounts signed uh, tokens with a different audience only for the purpose of NATS. And we also have a recent contribution using the CERT manager. You can define the TLS support all done by the inside of Kubernetes. You don't have to use uh, out of band uh, certificates. Uh, there's a Prometheus sidecar support. And again, as I mentioned, it's uh, NATS V2 ready. So you, have, you can create gateways, leaf nodes, and trusted operator. Uh, NATS Prometheus exporter also supports uh, NATS, uh, both NATS and NATS streaming. And uh, I'll just give you a quick demo of deploying um, NATS V2 cluster on Kubernetes. And see that running short of time, um, just move to questions as well. Uh, any questions? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I cannot hear. <laughs> There's no... Um, hi. Uh, could you go back to the slide uh, that's, that actually explains Go client of NAT streaming server? The slide from... Um, uh, Go client of NAT streaming server. NAT streaming server? Right. This one? Uh, no. Uh, the one that connects to the NAT streaming server. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so in that, so in, in the main function. Yes. So you're saying that standard connect test cluster, right? So a streaming server is like a client to NAT server, right? Yes, it's so a, how exactly. Does it, so since you have not, um, displayed any load balancer or cluster IP. So how, do, how does it actually communicate to the NAT server in this code? Oh, okay. It's not shown in this example, but you can pass, um, let's say, def. Um, it would be something like this, stand.connect name of the cluster, and you can uh, pass the NATS connection here. Okay. So by default, it's just connecting to the local uh, instance that you may have, but you can also create a functional option so that you can reuse any available NATS connection that you already have. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, another question. So um, what is the timeline for um, having NAT server version 2 and NAT streaming server, embedded NAT streaming server? What, what is the timeline for? For having uh, version 2 of NAT server and embedded NAT streaming server. Well, first we need to uh, finish the NATS v2 release, which should be um, within this end of this month. Or pro probably sometime around June, I think, maybe. Okay. Yeah, but it, it is uh, short term, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Thank you yep. so much. And just a quick example of um, how to create a NASB2 cluster with gateways. This is using the uh, DigitalOcean Kubernetes. 
and that uh, I just got help with that. I was blocked on an issue with the host ports. Um, so I just, uh, well, became more familiar with Cilium. Uh, Cilium is pretty cool. This is an example manifest where we are stitching together two different data centers. Uh, using a load balanced IP. Uh, these manifests are essentially the same. You only need to, uh, the only difference is the name of the data center and then the clients would be uh, aware of whether they're already connected or not to the other um, data center. So, so that they have a single outbound connection. Send the requests. Have a couple of queue subscribers connected to EU and SF. So the queue subscriptions, when you are in gateway mode, they are geo aware. So in this case, the, it is sending requests from Europe to another queue, a couple of queue subscribers that are also in Europe. So all the requests are going to the Europe queue subscribers. And it is only when those queue subscribers in Europe fail when the requests are going to start being received by the consumers that are in San Francisco uh, Digital Ocean Data Center. So it can, can help with the, for some disaster recovery uh, use cases. Uh, any other question? I think we're very out of time. Um, there's a deep dive talk tomorrow. If you want to learn more or have any pending questions, I'll just uh, let me know about the NATS V2 release. It's shipping very soon. Otherwise, uh, thanks for attending. Yep.